codes. Well, um, hi everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, we are the first week of July, um, which is quite interesting. Summer vacation, way. So um, today to the agenda, we don't have major announcement to share. Um, so we have few topics that we want to cover. So first one is we had an issue with uh, repo.jenkinsci.org over the last week. We had a few stabilization done on trusted.ci. We have one issue with update CLI. Um, we also have a topic on the, the Docker image that we build and ship um, for the Jenkins organization. We currently have some ongoing work with puppets um, and a few other things. So the first one is, let's go back to the GFrog incident. So what happened? Last week, while we were doing the security release, um, we noticed that we could not publish um, Maven artifacts under the release um, repository. Um, and at the same time, we discovered that GFrog was doing some maintenance on the service. Uh, so the service was available. We could download artifact. We could publish some plugins, but some repositories were locked. Um, the problem is because Jenkins. Um, because the problem is because Jenkins is uh, looking at the Maven repository to know if a new version is available. Uh, nobody would have received notification that a new version was published, and also because the way we build Docker images um, will fetch the latest version from the Maven repository, and so we could not build and publish Docker image in time. So we were able to publish every other artifacts like the Debian package, Red Hat, and so on. So those were available, um, but the problem was for people with an existing Jenkins instance and uh, for to build uh, the current image. So what we did is because the um, security release is built in advance and stored on a private Maven repository, we just created a virtual Maven repository in front of um, the release one, and that's a secret one, the, the, the one used by the security release. Um, so that was a workaround. We, I think I looked yesterday and now we were able to, um, to publish the repository. It appears that the service was degraded uh, since the 24th of June. So yeah, it took us a while. So we had discussion with people from GFrog. Um, one of the thing is I still have to update the runbook. We now have we can send, we should send we should have sent an email to support at gfrog.org um, to create an issue on their site. So that's something. But obviously because it's a free service, we don't really have a CD or whatever. So what I would like to be sure in advance is that we are notified for such maintenance. I mean it's not a big deal to delay the security release. I mean. This is something that we would like we would like to to identify in the future, um, because yeah, security release involves a lot of different people. Daniel does a great job to do that coordination in advance, and yeah, this one was not something that we expected. Um, this is the first time that this issue happened uh, during the process, so yeah, we just want to be sure that it does not happen anymore. Any question? Um, is there a channel uh, for GFrog to be informed about the upcoming incident that we should that we could subscribe to? So that that's a question that's a question that I asked, um, and I got no answer to that. Um, so the the problem is so we've been moved to the GFrog cloud recently, several weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. But before because we are kind of I mean because it's a sponsored instance, we don't have a GFrog account, so we don't receive email. Oh, sorry for the dog. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I have two dogs right now. So, <laughs> um, question yeah, sorry for that. No problem. What do you think about starting by sending an email to support at gfrog.com to acknowledge that we use that address to contact them uh, since they asked and use that initial email to ask for how do we know for the upcoming? So that will be the, an excellent support for the question, and it will show them a, a good example that we acknowledge their uh, their request. What do you think? Yeah, that's a good, that, yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, we should definitely send an email to support at gfrog.org to identify ways to um, 
to identify ways to be notified. At the same time, I know that there are discussion with their VP of engineering or something like that to to see how how they could work with us. Um, because yeah, that's that's a pretty big instance for them, um, and it's a very critical instance for the Jenkins project as well. And so, so yeah, definitely. Um, any other topic regarding GeneFrog? Sounds good. Um, so the next topic is about um, trusted CI and CI stabilization. Um, so this one, Mark, oh, sorry, Mark, uh, Damien, um, you put that topic to the, to the agenda? Yeah, it's just to, ac to acknowledge that it seems that we did not have a major incidents during the past two weeks. I was in holiday last week, so I don't really know. I just confirm or, or tell me. But it seems like that all the fixes we did the past months are now uh, stabilized instances. Yep. So soon we don't have much more time to spend on this unless we have a new uh, something upcoming. But it's not like it's okay. Yeah, that, 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 that was very nice. So nothing major to report last week. I mean, most of my attention was with the chief work um, with the security release. But I accepted that, yeah, that was pretty, pretty smooth. That means many thanks to everyone who contributed, including uh, Daniel and team that are not there. But uh, a lot of people put a lot of effort on this stabilization, which is a bunch of issues. So thank you, everyone, for your tips, issues, work. And things. The next topic, which is update CLI. So we identify an issue with update CLI since last Friday. So something changed um, on GitHub side. So I'm not able to authenticate with the GitHub. I mean, the way the, the, the way I wrote update CLI, I cannot authenticate with the GitHub API anymore for the GHCR. Um, so we generate issues. And so right now, builds that need to fetch Docker image from the GHCR um, Docker registry or failing. Um, I have a fix coming, um, which should be released today or tomorrow. So that's very brief, but yeah, until until there, um, just just that you know that uh, that affects the way we deploy HAM charts because once a day we also when we when we deploy and we manage a Kubernetes cluster we use HAM file and part of the process is also to run update CLI to fetch late um, newer uh, to fetch latest dependencies and so because update CLI is, is failing at the moment um, yeah that affects one of the job but most of them I mean for the rest of the day because we don't run update CLI the rest of the day it's fine so. It's right now, it's just some noise that I have to fix. Um, the next topic is about Docker images. So the Jenkins, yeah, the Jenkins Docker image. So in this time, um, Tim Jacob started uh, working on how we build and publish think, uh, Jenkins Docker images, so Jenkins slash Jenkins. So this time it's not really directly related to the Jenkins infrastructure. Um, but what, what team um, started here was to use a new feature provided by Docker, which is um, Docker BuildX, um, to improve the way we build um, and publish um, Docker images. So there is a PR that Damien put here, which is the Docker issues 1139. So I really encourage you to look at it. Um, it really improved the visualization of the number of combinations that we want to do. And it will also simplify how we build um, Docker image for multiple architecture. So the really nice thing is, is PR prepare the work for a lot of things coming. So we have a lot of um, exciting um, feature that will come. So one of them will be to, to build, to use Docker BuildX to build Docker images for uh, PPC64 um, S396X. Um, but yeah, I really encourage you to look at that PR provide feedback because that will have an impact the way we build. One of the biggest advantage that we have right now, it, it drastically reduced the build time. Um, that means that because we build Docker images in parallel, we can also add more, um, we can also add more um, yeah, Docker images. So it's, that's, that's really a nice improvement. Anything to add, Damien? No, we are also working on accelerating the tests. But right now, we cleaned up, updated, uh, did some, uh, let's say, core tasks. So don't hesitate to look at the issue tracker. Uh, just one thing, it's not the pull request the link you have there. It's an issue where team the effort of listing everything, all the steps, 
each element of the tool list might be related to a subsequent pull request. The advantage is that we have a bunch of tiny pull requests that can be deployed to master really soon. So we can see the effect right now and it for to split the work. So anyone interested, don't hesitate to discuss and comment on the scope of that issue. There's a lot of detail, so that's interesting. Uh, the impact for the infrastructure, there is still a link. It's about the machines we propose for these architectures and the security associated to that. In particular, um, using uh, different patterns. So I let you uh, read, but the impact is related to uh, how do we use this virtual machine? Ensure they are not full in terms of hard drive, that they are up to date, and how do we manage uh, safely the credentials? Thanks, Damien. Nothing else to add. The next topic is about um, some work that we are currently doing with puppets. So just to, to bring the, the context about what we are, why we are uh, spending a little bit more time with puppets. Um, as I mentioned last week, we the Rackspace sponsoring um, and that's and we now have to move to Machine Archive Jenkins.io to another location. And we've been investigating either uh, migrating that machine to Scaleway or to Oracle Clouds. The reason why we want to bring a new cloud provider is because we have some credit there that we could use and more importantly we currently have so the content that we have on archive.jenkins.io is already replicated on amazon so we were either thinking to move that to um, azure or to another location we decided to move go with oracle clouds right now because we did some experimentation with the new harm um, infrastructure and I mean, that's working great. That's not expensive because we, we are still in the free tier and we have one gigabyte uh, of traffic, which is enough for um, a fallback service. So the idea now is to redeploy that, that machine on Oracle Cloud, but we have two constraints here. The first one is um, in order to use a harm machine, we need to run Ubuntu 20.04. And we are still running Ubuntu 18.04 on our infrastructure. So we need additional testing to be sure that everything is working. I mean, that's it just we need to be sure that our puppet code can work with Ubuntu 20.04, which imply bumping some um, puppet modules. And the second thing is we also need to be sure that the base configuration also work on our um, architecture. So that's an interesting work, but that, that forced us to go back to the puppet codes and uh, update the, the, um, the dependencies and so on. Um, while I'm testing and running the test, I I really realize how much time we haven't updated that that Git repository. So we have quite a lot of outdated dependencies, and um, yeah, it's like updating the Let's Encrypt module imply that you want that you need to to upgrade. Um, I mean, we need to upgrade the firewall Let's Encrypt module. We need to upgrade a lot of different puppet modules, um, and um, so we have. I mean, we have some work to do here. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so most of my work is on the testing um, at the moment. I know that Damien has been working as well on the, the testing environment for the puppet code. So what Damien tried to do is to replace the vagrant with a virtual machine to replace that by Docker images. So it's faster um, to run the test um, and it's easier to replicate. Just a point on that, the goal is about the request uh, I did uh, along with Tim uh, on the mailing list about do we need the staging branch or not? Because on one way, the staging branch is slowing us down. On the other way, we need some tests to be sure that we don't break the puppet. The issue is that the master branch of that repository doesn't have a deploy step. As soon as the code is on the uh, production branch, puppet pull it without the CI finishing or the test passing. That means we need the pull request to have some tests. So the idea is to use Docker instead of VirtualBox so we can start spawning containers that will test, uh, do end-to-end -to -end testing. And then we can decide if we remove staging or not, but we need um, a safety net. That's the goal of that part. Does anyone do any testing on staging anyway there? No. So, uh, no. Yep. no. So no, so the reason, so the, the reason why historically we had the staging environment is because Tyler at the time was merging PR and staging, um, I mean testing um, the staging branch, 
And usually on Friday, it was merging the staging branch to the, to the master branch. Um, that, that's just for that. So the idea was just to have a, to have a buffer. Um, but I don't think that the staging branch still makes sense today. Uh, what mm -hmm. we did at some point was to automate. Um, so we were automatically create PR from, st uh, from staging to master branch. Um, but yeah, I think we should just get rid of staging. Yeah, yeah. This we uh, it seems we all agree on that. So I think I might proceed next week on that part. And here it's uh, only adding more test harness to feel safer on the pull request itself. Yeah, definitely. Do, did last... we answer your question, Tim? Yep, sorry. Yep. Thanks. Um, and yeah, and so the reason of that is uh, the last point. I'm working on adding uh, the agent as code for CI uh, Jenkins. I still uh, ongoing. I started and I didn't have time, so that will be my my main focus for the two next weeks. Next topic is about Terraform 1.0. I see that you bring the so yeah. I think that's Damien who added that topic. Um, yep. So the idea would be to upgrade um, to Terraform 1.0. I mean that 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 totally makes sense. I think we need to go one Git repository at a time because we have Terraform code for Azure, for um, Amazon, for Datadog. Um, so I, I don't know if you want to start working with one in particular, Damien, probably Amazon because that's the yes. one you are the most familiar with. Yep, and because this is the uh, Amazon and Datadog are the two one, uh, uh, we have a CI running, even if the CI fails uh, once per week, but still it's running automatically. So we need to start with this one. Datadog works without any issue. I've tested it already, and uh, I have to some work to do on the AWS. Might have one or two pull requests. We just if you start working with that Terraform, we should be sure that we have some um, automation in place to update um, on a regular basis when a new version is available. Because what I notice with Azure is that um, we bump the version and then we just leave the Git repository there and we don't don't retest. And uh, the... we should be sure that we are, we identify when we need to upgrade the the code and so on. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, right now you there is automated update of the latest patch version of Terraform. So we are using uh, 0 13 something, and it's kept updated by update CLI. Yeah. Uh, it's just there is a lock on the minor version. So the lock will be on 1.0 something. Uh, but yeah, that could be an improvement to have something to notify us. But the idea here is that uh, uh, 1.0 yeah. will freeze the syntax change. That's the promise of uh, Terraform 1.0 for all the branch one dot something dot something that the first production already, and there is LTS on that they are discussing about. But uh, so, so 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 the idea here would be to detect when a new major version is available and to mm -hmm. run some tests just to be sure that yeah it's yep. working, because because let's say in the case of the Azure uh, codes we have some mm -hmm. some effort to to upgrade the code. Mm -hmm. And yeah, while well, I'm mentioning the Azure code, I still would like to take some time to, to upgrade and to put it on track, but yeah, one thing at a time. Um, so I'm not sure who added. So I think we should put the name of the person who had a specific topic to the, so that's easier to have the context. Um, yep. So do you want to present that topic, Mark? I, I don't know if there's anything actually to present. So what we've got is a report that metadata signature checks are failing. Um, if when referencing the Allure plugin, it's tool installer. So it's the tool installer check that's failing. But as far as I can see from inside the JSON data, it looks like there is no SHA-256. So there's no checksum at all. And I've got to do more investigation. I don't know that there's anything for this meeting. I was worried initially it was a systemic broad brush thing related to certificates or something. But as far as I can tell, it is not. I'll do more investigation and report it separately. So nothing else needed. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that information. There is one last. So I have one topic that I would like to add to the agenda. Um, I don't know if you saw. So Gavin started the discussion on discourse about should we replace Google Analytics for um, by another tool? Um, last week or two weeks ago, we did some very quick experimentation with Plausible, but yeah, I quickly ran out of um, budgets on my accounts. And now giving starting um, hosting Matomo to on 
on his own infrastructure. I think that it would be better to move that uh, service to 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 the to the Jenkins infrastructure projects. Um, that's one thing, especially because it rely on PostgreSQL database, and so we could deploy uh, something manage on Azure or um, Amazon. We just have to, it would be nice to just spend a little bit more time to evaluate other options like sponsoring um, for long term, because my what I fear with that kind of service is that you have some state, I mean, you have, you generate some data and that's interesting to have those data on long term. I know that, for example, in the case of Google Analytics from time to time, I just try to identify what's the trend, for example, who's coming. I mean, the visitors sometimes are coming from Asia, sometimes they're coming from um, America and Europe and so on. And so it helped me to identify um, where to deploy um, service. And so if the idea is really to replace by um, something else than Google Analytics, then we should be sure that we, we can collect that on long, term, on long term. So that's all I want to say. So I really encourage you to look at the, the discourse. Um, it's under the Jenkins, the infrastructure. So it's under contributing infrastructure topic. And uh, yeah, that's all I want to say. Any other topic that you want to bring? So. I'm hesitant to sign up for more, more infrastructure like a Postgres database hosted by us, but I think you're right. Let's have the conversation in the community, in the, that channel. So having more, let's say a database, uh, one database is not like, I mean, that's one $100, something like that. So it's not, it's not really that expensive. So it's, I'm not really, I don't really worry for that service. I mean, I mean, this year, our CI environment cost us a lot more, a lot more. So um, that's that. That's the thing. Yeah, I was and less worried about less worried about cost and more about overhead of management. But understood. But that the the the, the, the reason, say. yeah, the reason what I, I was saying that uh, PostgreSQL database, uh, you have managed service and they are really stable. Um, so, well, I mean, you deploy that and just use them, and that's really easy to use. Uh, an example is a rating application. It uses a PostgreSQL database since said seven years, eight years. I mean, I have I don't know, I don't remember when when that service was put in place. But uh, um, as long as we don't have to maintain the database, I'm fine with that. Um, we are five minutes before um, the time. So any last topic that you want to bring? Otherwise, we, we still have the opportunity to start discussion on this course, as I mentioned, under the, the contributing infrastructure um, topic category, sorry. And we still have the, the, the infrastructure mailing list if we want to, to discuss. And we are still on RC. So if we don't have additional topic, I propose to stop the call here. Um, thanks, everybody, for your time. And um, goodbye.